we are, we are live good okay perfect okay so uh, good morning and good afternoon to all of you welcome to the Framatum live uh, today we're going to talk about uh, robotics within nuclear activities next so uh, i am Girek moga for the one who do not know me um, i'm a ceo of uh, intercontrol but also i'm head of uh, the Center of Excellence of, for Robotics uh, within Framatome. And uh, obviously, we're going to talk about uh, robotics today. Next. So before we start, uh, just to remind you that uh, the webinar will last uh, 60 minutes, uh, including uh, questions and answers. And uh, you can uh, use the chat box to ask your questions. And we reply to all of the questions at the end of the webinar. And also uh, be aware that uh, this webinar is recorded, so we can uh, share the content later on. Next. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about safety. Uh, why safety? Because uh, it's in our uh, DNA and uh, every single meeting we perform within uh, Framatom, we talk first about safety, as it is uh, the most important for us. Um, and here's a small story I'm going to tell you that happened about three weeks ago on a Sunday on the one people of my team. And it was um, at the EDF nuclear power plant in Saint Laurent. And again, on a Sunday, very specific day. And uh, one of our um, employees felt a bit tired and uh, didn't feel well, actually. And he felt oppressed. Uh, but when he was at rest, he was okay. He was not in his normal mood, which was important for, for us. And uh, he didn't want to eat or drink anything. So he was kind of in a weird situation. And um, a good thing is that uh, his team leader uh, understood that something wrong was going on with him. And uh, he tried to take care of him, tried to, to tell him to go to the emergency and so on, infirmary. And he did not want to. Uh, he felt, again, not really good, but didn't want to bother everybody. And it is quite a struggle to convince this, this guy to um, go to a nurse, uh, actually. And uh, eventually he did. Two hours later, this guy was having a surgery on his heart, uh, putting stent on, um, on his heart. He had a major issue and um, he, could, he could actually die of this. And uh, one of the things um, I want to remind uh, of this story is that um, first, when you try to take care of the other, uh, when you have the right behavior, when you think that somebody is not going good, uh, you can take actions. And um, the, the shift leader made the right decision and uh, had the right behavior calling the emergency and so on. And basically, he saved his life. So uh, that's a good reminder for all of us in safety that you need to take care of the other, wherever you are, whenever you are. Um, I think it's a good lesson of life, even in, on your family or business, wherever. OK, next. So back to the bo robotics. Um, why robotics? Uh, basically, because uh, technologies in robotics and the different solutions uh, are really changing uh, the way we perform uh, in our industry. That's a very important uh, point, that uh, there's drastic change, dramatic change into robotics. And we think uh, that it's very important to, to move on robotics, and that's what we're going to explain it today. Um, one thing is that we cannot perform without robots today. However, we can perform much better with good robots. And that's why, uh, as we need to improve our performance, robots are definitely key in our um, asset management. Next. So, Framatome Center of Robotics, which is an excellent center. Um, why we created this uh, Center of Robotics? First, just like I said, major changes in the robotic industry and in the nuclear industry. Uh, let's think about different uh, points. First, manufacturing. We do manufacture a lot of components. However, in the nuclear industry, as well as some other, we need to manufacture in a constant quality and repeatability, even if we do not produce 
many components, we need to make sure that they are produced in a constant quality. Then we need to maintain and service the nuclear power plants. Um, we cannot go without robots just because of uh, safety, so to reduce those and also to, to cost issue. And the last thing is that uh, we need to perform in a very complex environment. Um, complex mean some tools that can deal with the complex environment and robots are key there. So we created a, a community, robotic community, with more than 70 people within Pharmatom. And the idea here is to create a research and development roadmap for the five coming years, and also investment roadmap as well, just to improve and reinforce our capabilities. Next. So what is the center of uh, excellence? Um, to, like I said, we are more than 70 people, and we will still increase in the next uh, two years more to 80 people. Um, we have right now about 100 different systems, uh, when systems can be different robots. And we will double this number in the next five years. So meaning that we have more than 200 systems in the next five years. And for, for this, uh, there's two strategic points. First, uh, we're going to invest uh, and uh, make some research and development for more than 45 million euros in the next five years as well. So the focus will be uh, on robot for dose reduction, again, for maintenance. We need to go from manual to automatic and for dismantling as well. Like I said, for manufacturing, we need robot for constant quality and repeatability. So we buy more robots for manufacturing. We also have a point on how to integrate many tools on one robot. And the main one are obviously machining, welding, and uh, non-destructive examination. Um, and also, one last thing is uh, how to monitor the technology. Uh, basically, when you perform a very uh, specific weld, for instance, we need to monitor all the data to make sure that we can uh, then have a story of it. Of it. Next. So uh, the context here is that the robotic goes through all the life cycle of a nuclear power plant, obviously, from a new build to decommissioning. And uh, what you can see on this slide here is that we go through pretty much everything. So manufacturing, obviously, but also uh, repair or maintenance, cleaning, ND, but also replacement to dismantling. So the whole life cycle of a nuclear power plant needs robots uh to make sure that we assess all these uh, questions Next. so what makes us different in robotics uh five points uh, first history um we always use in nuclear industry robots that's uh, that's a given and uh, the idea of the center of excellence is to take all the best parts uh, worldwide so worldwide for from atom means uh, united states germany and france as we perform uh, all this kind of uh, story here of uh, manufacturing, maintenance, or dismantling on different nuclear power plants with different constraints, here we can use the three of them, which is a huge asset. Second point is the know-how. Um, we know how to use them. We Just to provide an idea, more than 95% of the operation are performed by robots uh, today, again, it's due to the environment but we can still improve this number. And um, we design, we buy, we think, we maintain the robot, we operate the robot, obviously. So we know how to use them. The other good thing is that we're independent. Um, if we cannot develop the robot ourselves, we can buy some of them from wherever. Uh, what we're using is what we can find the best. Um, if we don't find it on the shelf, we develop it ourselves. And that's a very important thing because it's so specific that most of the time we need to develop it. Obviously, we use them. We use them again, 95% of the operations. So it's uh, we use them on a regulated environment um, where everything is uh, traceability, certification, and compliance are key. And we need to make sure that we operate them in this environment. On also, like I said, we do some investment. Uh, we're going to spend more than. 45 million euros so we are still growing 
Um, again, the idea is to make sure that most of the operations are done by robotics. So uh, next. Today, what we're going to see is uh, three use case, cases uh, from three different uh, regions. So that's important. The first one, we'll talk, uh, so Olga will talk about SUSI. SUSI is a submarine system for inspection. And then we'll talk about Pelican uh, by Pierre uh, from the fuel department. And then we'll talk by Vivero uh, by Adele uh, from uh, INC Germany. So next, so I let the floor to uh, Olga. You can present uh, Suzy. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Girek, and welcome from my side as well to this webinar. My name is Olga Damis. I'm in charge of um, outage tooling design and management in installed base Germany. And I'd like to introduce our Suzy submarine system for inspection to you. Next slide, please. So I will start uh, sharing a short case study with you. Uh, might be a similar case uh, that you experienced in the past. So a European operator had an additional demand on uh, visual inspections or in-service inspections uh, based on the uh, update of regulatory requirements. And uh, for that, the use of the pole guided camera solutions that was done before was quite limited um, as the range of um, the areas to be accessed um, was um, quite low. So in this case, applying the submarine system SUSI allowed the fully remote controlled um, execution of this extended inspection scope, but with no additional time. What was uh, important uh, to um, ensure the uh, outage time and the audit performance. And in addition to this um, inspection scope, the SUSI was also used to observe the underwater um, equipment and um, um, yeah, operations uh, during the outage, and uh, therefore no additional equipment was needed. Um, what resulted in time savings as um, there had been no additional setup times or um, alternative applications uh, of different tools. Next slide, please. So this has also already um, demonstrated some of the challenges um, that outage works and uh, NDE um, are faced uh, so far. So the first thing that um, all the examinations have to be executed fast and reliably um, during the outage within an optimized time frame. But at the same time, uh, the accuracy has to be very high um, for an optimum performance um, without any, um, uh, let's say, restrictions. Um, one challenge are areas that are hard to examine due to accessibility and also maybe um, covering a high uh, dose rate and um, regarding ALARA principles, um, reduction of personal dose is one of the main objectives during all the outage works. And then there is also the challenge to have uh, capability, for example, to retrieve foreign materials immediately after they were found during inspection um, without timely um, application of um, other tooling. Next slide, please. So the SUSI submarine uh, system is um, yeah, a multi-purpose device that uh, basically um, was developed for underwater inspection but it also performs for an object search and retrieval in various areas and other um, applications. As mentioned by Girek before, um, there is a long-term experience at Framatome on robotics. So for SUSI, it's about 20 years of um, yeah, continuous improvement and uh, technology development. Presently, we have the third generation of the submarine systems. And we also, uh, let's say, uh, include the experience from more than 500 successful applications in various reactor types, not only during outage, but also um, for specific activities or urgent works. So the system is qualified uh, according to several codes and standards to be uh, applicable quite flexibly. And there is a wide range of views, some kind of modularity, um, starting by visual exams, um, ultrasonic testing, for example, for the buffer bolts, but also um, foreign uh, object retrieval 
and further applications like those measurement or surveillance of activities. Next slide, please. So stepping into more detail, what is the technology behind? So um, as you might, um, let's say, um, require from a submarine system, it's fully remote controlled. Uh, it has a very stable um, setup underwater, what is important for a precise um, inspection performance and also for high precision uh, gripping or removal of uh, foreign objects. Uh, there is a joystick control to maneuver the submarine in uh, different directions uh, very easily. And for sure, talking about uh, applications in the nuclear environment uh, inside the reactor pressure vessel, um, the components are highly radiation resistant um, and tolerant um, for long-term uh, reliable operation. Um, the various add-ons, uh, I will uh, give a more detail on the next slide, are um, uh, factor of flexibility. And beside the standard SUSI, as you see in this picture, there is also a smaller version, um, let's say completing the family, the so-called mini SUSI, that is um, even smaller size to reach, um, let's say, small areas uh, for investigation. So please move to the next slide. So what are the key features? Uh, just for summarizing um, the capabilities. So there is a new uh, full HD camera in the SUSE Gen 3, and this can be alternatively replaced by a high red tube camera that is even uh, more radiation resistant for best imaging quality uh, during inspections. Um, precise measurements can be done by an integrated line and distance laser. For example, if there is an indication um, it can be immediately uh, be assessed in the dimensions to have a first um, assessment um, parameter. Um, the operation is uh, quite easy with the new um, control unit um, for um, easy maneuverability, uh, also in, in uh, let's say, tricky areas. Um, you just need to, uh, let's say, put in the, the submarine system into the system that you uh, want to apply it. So it's quite short, up set, uh, short setup time and um, flexibility. Um, and uh, as you can see on the picture, there are some uh, modular uh, add-ons like the satellite camera in the upper picture that is capable to move in small connecting pipes um, for inspection there and also a suction device or the gripper um, to remove um, foreign material uh, like washers, uh, small nuts, but even cable straps we found and, and removed with the gripper and also um, the suction device to remove uh, debris or very small material um, that can be later on uh, collected and further um, analyzed. Um, that's an overview on uh, the SUSI. So feel free to uh, put all your questions into the chat. Thanks for listening, and I will give the floor to the next presenter. Yeah, thanks, uh, Olger. Um, I will provide the floor to uh, Pierre for Pelican. Hello, I'm Pierre Vigel. I'm in charge of the Pelican. And uh, it's, uh, this device is to remove foreign material from fuel assemblies. So uh, next. So time to time we get foreign materials uh, inserted in fuel assemblies. It may happen in the bottom nozzle uh, between fuel rods or on grids. Usually those uh, foreign materials are metallic. Uh, uh, those impacted fuel assemblies must be cleaned before uh, core reloading. Okay, uh, next. We do have two difficulties in removing 100% of foreign materials. Until now, this job uh, was uh, um, uh, is achieved manually with a nine meter pole uh, to which plier are fastened at the bottom. Uh, at such a distance, we do lack of precision to catch material, which may be uh, maybe only a few millimeters. Lack of uh, camping power, lack of, of movement flexibility, uh, long introduction time in fuel building. Uh, 
when we don't uh, uh, succeed, those uh, fuel assembly are not reloaded. Next. Uh, efficiency and aim. Uh, benefit on, uh, uh, oops, sorry. Efficiency and aim. Um, 100% of foreign material from the intervention on which we commit. Uh, also, another aim is fast intervention. Installation of uh, equipment easy to implement on fuel elevator or standard pole. And also fast intervention of fuel assembly, foreign, I mean, uh, foreign material extraction. And first of all, safety, uh, we must control uh, forces to avoid any damage on fuel assemblies. Next. Uh, our solution is Pelican. Uh, this arm has up to six degrees free of freedom and is remotely uh, controlled by an operator acting on a joystick. Uh, work on uh, all fuel assembly area between the roads below the bottom nozzle and uh, on the top nozzle. It's uh, easy to, to install on the fuel elevator on EPR multi-inspection facility. And the performance now is 90%, uh, 95% of success uh, versus 30% 30, 30 before. And it increases the guarantee for the customer to be able to reload its fuel assembly. Huge gain for the customer. Uh, next, please. And this uh, a pelican, it's, uh, we, we do have seven quick uh, disconnect pliers and two suction cannulas. Uh, and all this system is a bayonet uh, mount. Uh, okay, next. Uh, six, since uh, pelican is in use, uh, 12 for, for, uh, foreign matter has been removed in two campaign. Uh, those was on the fuel elevator and the MIF. Here on the video, you can see we are re removing a little material, which is uh, introduced in a grid, the bottom nozzle. Thank you for listening. Thank you, uh, Pierre, uh, for this presentation. And uh, here's the last presentation uh, by Adele. Uh, thank you. Hello, I'm Adele Weber, and I will talk to you about our solution Virero, which stands for Virtual Remote Robotics for Radiometric Sorting. Next slide, please. So the challenge that it tackles is that the number of radioactive waste is ever increasing, and there is limited nuclear waste storage space for it. So there is an urgent need to optimize the, the volume of these waste drums uh, by sorting or resorting uh, what is contained in them. Uh, especially because some drums contain waste of uh, different radiation levels. So uh, it is very important to make it as efficient as possible uh, and by optimizing this volume. On another hand, uh, we must also uh, always take into account uh, the operator conditions. For characterizing waste, uh, we use, for example, hot cells, which uh, need the operator to be quite close, which um, means that there is a chance for radiation exposure. And uh, it also requires significant physical effort for the operator since it uh, the operator will have to maneuver the handles that you see in the pictures. So there is a lot of potential for, for automatization of these tasks. Next, please. So our solution, Virero, is actually a sorting plant uh, that is modular and um, uh, where robotic arms will sort and process the waste uh, so that it is then sorted into different uh, drums depending on their radiation levels and also on the sh their shape. 
So um, in the bottom uh, blue line, timeline, you see that uh, uh, first the items would be brought into this plant and uh, put on the table. Then there would be a, a 3D spatial and also radioactive characterization of the items. Then the robotic arms would evaluate the best gripping position and grip the item. If necessary, the item will uh, be able to be uh, dismantled uh, into smaller pieces and uh, to finally be sorted into the barrels while also creating automatic documentation. Uh, the other part of our project is uh, the fact that the control system is based on virtual reality. So the oper operator does not need to be close to the robotic cell at all, since um, the operator will be able to see what is happening in the robot robotic cell thanks to the headset and a camera uh, in the robotic cell. And that's what you would see in the middle picture uh, in the upper part of the slide. Um, the, uh, well, next slide, please. So this is the process of what would be going on here. Uh, one of the gripper arms would grip, um, one of the objects, uh, since, uh, this object, um, might require, uh, processing. Um, the object would be sent to the left part of the of the um, plant, where you see the blue robot, um, which is a very heavy duty robot that is able to cut through the the um, uh, the the item. Then uh, the um, white robotic arms. Yes, now I think we can see. Well, no. Uh, the white robotic arms would take the cut up parts and sort the items depending on the radiation levels, uh, etc. in the drums that you see at the back. Um, as you can see, our robotic plant uh, is uh, has um, the two white robots, which are six, uh, se six to seven axis um, robots uh, that would um, do the gripping. Then the yellow uh, robotic arm would be in charge of the camera to, for the view of the operator. And finally, um, the, um, the blue is the heavy duty uh, robot for processing. And this is completely um, uh, uh, adaptable to, to the client's needs. Next slide, please. So the benefits of our solution is first uh, the efficient uh, radioactive waste uh, uh, volume optimization, the reduction uh, and better um, organization of the waste into the different drums. Uh, secondly, it is the highly intuitive, informative and state of the art uh, control system through the virtual machine, which um, makes it completely effortless for the operator to operate the the robots and uh, handle the the waste so uh, there would no longer be any physical effort needed uh, for the operator uh, some steps which are highly repetitive are completely automatic but uh, since the uh, the waste is highly variable uh, it is still needed for the operator to perform um, manual uh, operations. And finally, since uh, the, the virtual machine enables the operator to be uh, wherever he or she wants, so it completely eliminates the dose exposure. Uh, our solution also brings an automatic high quality documentation and uh, the sorting plan uh, is able to group the processing and the sorting of the radioactive waste. Next slide, please. So Virero is a partnership between Framatome, 
the uh, Aachen Institute for Nuclear Training and also the Friedrich Alexander University in Erlangen uh, with the uh, Factory Automation and Production Systems Institute from this FAO University. Uh, the project has been sponsored by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research in Germany and uh, we have now um, finished the prototypes and are open for beta test implementation uh, completely adapted to the customer needs. So uh, if uh, you are interested, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, uh, Adele. Very interesting indeed. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Now we have um, some time for questions. Uh, I don't know, Camille, if some questions came up during the meeting. I think so. Okay, so, sorting out. The so first one I have is from uh, Luc. Uh, so what about the robot qualification, especially the software? Um, so that's a question I guess all of us could answer <laughs> with different answer. Um, maybe, maybe I can provide the, the floor to, um, to Olga first, because in Germany you have a specific way of qualify, qualification, uh, different than France. Olga, do you want to answer yeah. this? Um, well, for the SUSE um, uh, submarine system, um, we have, uh, let's say, um, um, specifications for um, software qualification independently um, of the type of uh, robot um, that um, cover the um, steps of, um, let's say, qualification tests and verification of functionalities. And then for an uh, inspection robot uh, like SUSE, there are also the uh, code and standard uh, related uh, demands for uh, qualification um, that is, uh, let's say, for sure, depending on the standard that um, needs to be applied. Uh, that's why we have the different qualifications, as mentioned, uh, according to um, Enik, uh, ASME, um, KTA, and so on. Do you have a specific qualification for the software? Um, we have, a, let's say, software um, qualification specification that is um, implemented and applied for all um, our software developments. And it uh, covers as well the, uh, let's say, process of uh, software developments, but also um, the steps um, that are uh, applied uh, during uh, the qualification process, uh, also the link between the software and the tool itself to prove at the end that the whole system is um, working according to the requirements. Okay. And uh, maybe uh, to Pierre, as I know that the qualification in France is a bit different. Uh, what have you done in terms of qualification for uh, Pelican? So the micro is better. Uh, we went to a qualification center where, where we did practice and um, may, made some uh, tests mainly on the stress we can, uh, on the control on the stress we apply the, on the fuel assemblies. It's a, a quite a long process, but it went efficiently, yeah. Going on to Adele, uh, did you qualify the Virero yet? Or is it on the process to be qualified? Um... Uh, we haven't done it yet. Okay. But I guess uh, what you just said, uh, Olga and Pierre, is uh, is answering the question is that yes, you have to go through a qualification process, and you need to qualify the tool, the robot by itself, and also the software. Um, I do have more questions for Olga. Though, uh, do you need a crane to handle Suzy? Uh, basically, no. To to put it on, on the pool on, on the RP. Um, the, the, the weight of the submarine system is about uh, 25 kilograms. Um, so it can be handled uh, manually by, by one or two operators. And this was one of the main purposes to make the submarine system independent from uh, any auxiliary device that is needed uh, for handling. Okay. 
And what's the maximum cable length for this remote operation? Uh, maximum cable length is 70, 70 meters. So this allows a quite uh, good distance between the operator and the submarine system, uh, following the Alara to place the operator stand in a low dose uh, zone um, with, um, uh, let's say, a lot of flexibility in the submarine operation. And uh, how do you recover Susie if you lose uh, power? <laughs> that that's a good that's a good uh, point. Uh, it's it's a very often uh, raised question. So um, for Suzy, it's quite simple. The cable itself is uh, designed with a strength that is sufficient that you can pull the submarine uh, out of the water. So um, it is, um, let's say, tested and, and calculated uh, that the cable is sufficient um, to, to handle the submarine. So you can uh, pull it and, and uh, lift it uh, out, of the, out of the water um, to be sure that um, uh, you have it recovered in a, in a safe way. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question for Pierre on Pelican. Uh, does uh, the harm contain electronics and how much uh, dose rate can it cope with? Oh, yes, yes, it does. It does contain uh, electronics, some electronics inside the harm. Uh, it's very important because as uh, the Pelican is very close to the fuel assembly, there is uh, usually there is very few electronics which can cope with the do such dose rate, and, uh, so uh, and it. Um, I don't have the maximum dose rate, but it, it, the can, uh, pelican can cope with a minimum of 2.4 by uh, two to the tenth force gray um, cumulative dose, and uh, I say minimum because uh, during um, this exposure uh, test, the arm was uh, still uh, working, but uh, the irradiation cell was, uh, wasn't more, anymore available. So the test has to be stopped. And also since uh, this test, we, we added some, uh, some lead inside the forearm to, uh, to, add, to add some margin. Okay. Uh, uh, before going to more questions, uh, to all the attendees, if you have more questions, you can uh, go on the chat box and you can ask your question. Uh, back to you, Pierre. Uh, did you use uh, the Pelican on the VVR plant or only on the PWR? Uh... On, only on PWR, yeah. Okay. But it, can, it can go uh, where we, we want, in fact. You can pick up whatever kind of fuel uh, roads uh, you can, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. because the pliers, uh, the sinus pliers are 1.5 millimeters thick. Okay, so it's adaptable. Okay, yeah. I do have questions for Adele. Um, I have a question about how fast can Virero uh, sort? Do you have kind of a speed or and so on? And uh, is it uh, autonomous or do you have to do some manual control mode? So um, it really depends on the application because uh, so the uh, our solution is semi automated. So that means that uh, if there are steps that are very repetitive, um, then it could uh, it could be completely automized. Um, but uh, if the wastes are different every time, then we cannot tell the robot uh, to do it all on its own. And that's where uh, uh, through the, uh, the virtual reality, uh, the operator with the joysticks could also manually control the robots. So um, uh, if all of the waste is this always the same, the same size and everything, then it could be quite quick. But uh, if it's very variable, then it would take more time. So it really depends. It depends. Okay. Do, do you know how much space do you need to install a Virero? And um, how long does it take to install Virero to be uh, to work on? Yes. So our idea is to make this sorting plant uh, modu uh, very um, uh, as a module. So um, uh, the idea is, for example, that it could be built inside a container, industrial container, 
and then could be very easy to install wherever. Um, so yes, that's um, for the uh, part on the size, uh, that would be my answer. And for the time, it would take uh, around maybe half a year. Okay. And um, what kind of people do you need to to make it work uh, to operate Vireo? Do you need specific training to, to make it work? Uh, the idea is to make it uh, as easy and natural as possible to use. So um, uh, through the virtual reality headset, uh, the idea is to make it really as um, natural as possible. Uh, so, uh, of course, the operator would need uh, training, but it would be um, quite easy to manipulate uh, and would not need very difficult um, operate, oper operation um, techniques or anything. Okay. Uh, you, you mentioned at the end of your presentation that uh, you are uh, on the development of this robot, but how far is development? Do you have a, a pilot going on or where are you? Where do you start? Um, so we have uh, finished building uh, the prototypes and are actively looking for a pilot campaign. So uh, if anybody's interested, we please um, contact us. Okay. Thanks. Um, I have another question on software again. Uh, do you use a third party uh, for the Swift software qualification? Uh, maybe Olger, did you use uh, any specific company to as a third party? Um, we use this uh, third party if um, this uh, kind of third party involvement was um, required by the code or the regulation. According to this, we, we did the qualification. Okay. And uh, Pierre, uh, for you, do you use a third party as well? You need to put your uh, mic on, on uh, Pierre. Yeah, we, 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 we do use a third party uh, specialized in robotics. You do use a, a third party, right? Yeah. Yes. And uh, which one? Do you have a name of a third party? Uh, yeah, a, a car robotic. Okay. And uh, Adele, did you use also a third party? Um, so uh, the software is uh, developed by us, uh, but um, we use um, open source um packages and um and this kind of open um uh, uh open uh source software but uh we would not need um mm, uh this qualification for the nuclear uh tests okay I don't see any other question coming on so far. Uh, maybe Kami, you have some other because my screen is stuck on, on the on the question. If you do have some, you can ask. Not not more questions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, just to all the attendees, you can see all the contact information here right now on, on the slide. So if you have any more questions uh, on different robots you've just seen, you can ask uh, Olga, Pierre or Adele. They will be available to answer to all the questions. And um, thank you very much for, for the attending and the questions. I think it's pretty interesting on what we're doing so far. Next slide. You can also visit our solution portfolio. You will have many answers to, I guess, to the, the questions you have, and also see the other solutions we we may have uh, on robotics. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the presentation uh, and for the free uh, presenter. It was very interesting. Thank you very much. Have a good day.